In this video I'll again answer a few questions of the comments of my most recent videos and show the few little updates I made to them. A quick update on my version of the Samurai Rodogic. First of all I marked my fences so I don't accidentally throw them to the firewood. Now to the base plate, a few people asked in the comments on the video why I didn't make the slots all the way through so I can slide the fences just all the way front to back and don't have to change the bolts where there is this bridge. The thing is from the sheet I had I could only get one base out of that so I didn't want to screw it up and I would rather make these slots too strong than too weak and risk breaking them. But then on the offcut I made a test slot that's the length of both slots combined. It's a little screwed up but that doesn't matter. The thing is this is more than strong enough for this application so I will cut through all those bridges. This is my setup on the router table. I have a stop on this end and on this end and I just make a lot of shallow passes. In the video where I made this, I made the slots with the CNC router. This would be the setup how I would do it without one. With the long slots I now obviously have all the travel without switching the bolts. Next an update on my router flattening jig. The big question in the comments of this video was how to get the second face parallel to the first one when you flatten a big slab. And actually the solution was in the comment section because somebody commented I should add leveling feet to the beams where the slabs will sit on and make sure that those beams make a perfectly flat plane with the string method and then when I attach the side guides make sure that those have the same distance to the surface of the beams and then everything will be coplanar and parallel to each other. Let's say these are the beams where my slab will sit on that I want to flatten and then make sure with leveling feet that this here is a flat plane. I can put this on top and then when I attach my side guides and make sure that this is the same distance everywhere, then this will also be a flat plane that is coplanar to the first one. And then when I route here, this will make everything flat and parallel to each other. So that means I now make good leveling feet. All I need for this is some M12 hardware and some scrap pieces of plywood. I can now insert a bolt into the foot, place a washer, eyeball center it and transfer the whole locations. Then threading on a nut and tighten it really good. Next I made the hexagonal hole and the holes for the washer into the beam and then drilled a 30mm hole in the middle and that's a place for the threads of this bolt to go. Next comes a nut and screwing the washer over that. Then another nut onto the foot and now the foot can be screwed in. The nice thing about these feet now is that I can adjust the height by turning the whole foot and when I'm at the correct height I can lock this down 
and then everything is completely solid. The other nice thing about this feet is that you can even adjust the height if there's an extreme load on top because this nut is locked in place to the foot with the pin and so you can grab it with a wrench and still turn it. And at the correct height, lock the other nut and you're done. I used the same leveling feet on our lathe cabinet and the lathe together with the cabinet weighing about 300 kilograms it was no problem to adjust the height and get a level. The only difference is here I used M16 hardware. And of course I also have a video about that. Now I can put the two strings across these beams and level out the beams. The method is the same as I demonstrated in making this jig. The two strings need to intersect each other. Because they can't do that, I need to lift one string up by one string thickness. It's about a drill bit two millimeter in my case. I have one on both sides on the upper string and I need to make sure that this just touches the lower string and if that happens and they don't push each other in any direction then everything is level and the beams are in one plane. As you can see that's not the case yet. The lower string moves together with the upper string when I lift it. After adjusting a little bit I'm at this point again. I can lift the upper string up. The lower one stays where it is but I can't push it down without pushing the lower one down as well. Now all I have to do is set the distance from here to here on all four corners the same. Then these side guides should make a parallel plane to this here, which this sled can travel on, and the router that's in here will then cut flat and parallel surfaces to each other. I now have a gigantic jointer planer. And that brings me to my big project that I'm making at the moment. I already have more than 350 gigabytes worth of footage and I'm not done yet. And I think I'll get about four videos out of that. But I can't say when the first one will be published, maybe already in January. But who knows, it takes quite a while to build this project actually. And a big thanks to everybody who gave me something through my Amazon wishlist. Somebody really gave me this battery powered saw from Bosch. This is just amazing. I thought this is way too expensive and I just put it on the list there thinking nobody will ever buy this, but why not put it on the list? One hour later, somebody bought it. It's just amazing. Thanks a lot for that and all the other stuff as well.